escape the three skeleton kings. Tidy of a day routine, ever dream of life, romantic adventure. Want to get away from it all? Feel for you, escape. Escape designed to free you from the four walls of the day. Half an hour of high adventure. Tonight we escape to lonely a lighthouse of the steaming jungle coast of French Guiana. A nightmare world of terror at once. Jean, picture this place, a grey tempering cylinder, guarded by iron rods of concrete, the key itself, a bare black rock. 150 feet long, maybe 40 wide. That's a low tide, a high tide, just the light rising 110 feet straight up from the, out of the ocean. All about it, the churning water, grey, green, scum dumpled, warm as soup and swarming, gigantic bat like fish, great violet schools of Portuguese men of war, and yes, sharks, the big ones, 14 footers. If that wasn't enough, there was the hot, dank, rotten smelling wind that came to at us day and night of the jungle swamp. The mainland of wind that smelled like death. Tender the face of light with a watertight bronze door. Door opens, Jean, and in you went. Door slams shut, footsteps upstairs. Jean, and up, yes, up, and up, and round, and round. Pass the tanks of oil, coils of rope, cases of wicks, racks of lanterns, stacks of spuds, cones and cans, and up and up and round and round. Over the light storeroom was the food storeroom. Over the food storeroom was the bunk room, where the three of us, where the three of us slept. And over the bunk room was the living cooking room. And over the living cooking room was the lights. What's it stop? Jean, she's a beauty. Bounce on a burnerina, a glistening steel axle, a rotary mechanism. Slow, steady click of mechanism. It is heard all out of the night scenes of Lighthouse Gallery. Jean, all night, you lie there on the stone deck of the gallery, the light revolving smoothly and quietly over your head, raising a bright white light eye. 360 degrees around the horizon. You lie there watching to see that the feeders keep working. If everything ran right, it wouldn't be bad. You have a two feathers snoring in their snaps, two levels down. You smoke your pipe to kill the stink of the wind. It wouldn't be bad. About those, those other two, Lewis and Gusty. Ha, what a pair, Lewis. His head man was a big fellow. The best country. Black beard, little hard black eyes. Pair of arms that, I tell you, those arms as big around, around as my legs. Yes, head man he was. And what word he let go was law. Silent fellow, though I spent my first two weeks trying to strike up a real conversation, the most I ever could get out of him was, 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 <coughs> Gene, I look, took up his profession because I don't know <coughs> people. They talk too much. It's quiet work, like the attending. Let's keep it at that way. You're getting to be as bad as anything. I thought maybe at one, for once you'd send me somebody who could keep his mouth shut. Gee, that was Lewis. They only accused me of coming light and gusty. I quieted down. Because Gusty was the talkiest man I ever met. Talkative and ugliest. He was a hunchback. Stood over four feet high. A red hair and blue, big blue eyes. Seems he'd been an actor in Paris. Gusty played in over 200 different productions nearby. The Grand Garoli. Oh, that, but it was monstrous, horrible. The way we used to scare the audience. I uh, was hated. Yes, yes. He used to throw things and hiss and bear their teeth at me. Finally got too bad. Couldn't stand it any longer. Gave it a fit on my nerves, you understand. Yes, gave it up completely. I really did. I couldn't stand it any longer. Gene, it all started one morning at 2.30. I was a watch lying on the cool stone deck, pulling my pipe, throwing out the blackness, fluorescent comas, a big yellow stars. When, at the corner of my eye, I noticed something show up for a second, something the lights had touched far off. 
I waited for her to come round again, and then she did. There it was. Three miles, a big one, a half a mile off, coming down at the north northwest, coming straight for us. You must have said I liked this where it was for very good reason. Dangerous submerged reefs surrounded us, and ships kept clear. But this one, the sunny vessel, was coming straight on. Jean's brisk footsteps, Jean. I went over to the gallery door and looked at the old down. Yells, yeah, Lewis, Lewis. Lewis yells from below. Huh? What is it? Jean's ship headed for the reefs, Jean. Yells yeah, from below. I'm coming right up. Jean, I had the glasses on up now. I couldn't read her name. I could see her quite plainly. All sounds set, the foam creaming lay under her bow. She's beautiful, a beautiful line, a Dutch ship. I guessed her. And why didn't she turn? Every time I pop, it passed, a light hit her, a glare of day. Lewis footsteps approached Lewis' ship where? Gee, north, northwest, the light would touch her in a moment. But it's, oh, well, can't you see us? Gee, look at her. She just keeps coming on. Lewis disgusted with square heads. Sir Augustus footsteps approached Gussie. What is it? What is it, Jean? Watch north, northwest. Gussie after falls. Oh, I know what it is. This what? Gussie the Dutchman, fine Dutchman. But he did it in a play about her once. Oh, the film that she's ghastly, cousin, hag rabbins, curse driven, mass on and on. This I'll oh, show it with you. I falls. Oh, she's laughing. This yes. This it's a sloppy way to come about. Realizes she's daring it. That's it. Jean derelict, Lewis abandoned, crew left her for some reason or another. Instead of sinking, she's gone on running before every wind. I guess he should not be long, run long, not with those reeds to break her up. There's a beautiful ship now, why would men leave a ship like that? Jean, she didn't just ram us, though we all respected it. But as we waited for the crash, she laughed again, caught some old gusts and went about. He watched the rest of her's black hours, healing and rocking, pushed and pulled, every stray wind, every black creek current, watched all until the, till the dawn of time came, to the ter- sea turned from black to pearly grey, and she came again, heading for us. He had our, our, our glasses trained on her now. Lewis, Augusty, you could kill the light. Gusty, right, chief. Jean doesn't, doesn't look so good at, at, by daylight. Think she'll be ground this time? No, answers from Lewis. I say, do you think she, she'll ground this time? Less than, hmm. He says, it's impossible, actually impossible. She wants. Lewis, here, take my glasses, they're better than yours. Jean, all right? What is it? it it's your, your... pauses. For, I had a focus, and then my breath froze in my throat. Decks were swarming with dark brown carpet. It looked like a fun- granitic fungus, but undulating on the masts and the yards. The guys all were ha- hundreds, no thousands, no million. I don't know, an ancestral number of tremendous rats. Do you see them? Jean, yes, I see them. Yes, now we know why she's derelict. Jean, yes, now we know. Gusty approaches. What are we two? What are you two good doing? Here, give me a look. Do it to Jean. Yes, give him a good glasses, Gusty. Take a look, Chatterbox. Give you something to talk about. Jean, she's still hanging for us. Yes, yes. Gusty whimpers in fear. Jean, is she going to turn? She'd better turn, turn soon. Do you suppose she doesn't? Jean, you mean suppose she piles up on the key? There's a slow tide. Jean, yes, it is. There's, well, there's all the conversation. Why? There's a conversation, Gussie. Ah, uh, here. You want the glasses again? You want to take another look? Gussie, no, no, Jean. She'll still coming on. Coming on. Gussie, on the ship. Go away, go away, Lewis. The ship. Turn, will you turn? I say, three, turn. The ship breaks apart on the reef. Jean cracked up. Gussie rats look on the water like a carpet. Jean is swimming. No, it's a shot is swimming. There's ship rats. Jean, but they're swimming for the dog rocks. 
Gertie, the door below, it's open. Gina, well, come on. Three steps of foot that race down the stairs. Gee, the time we went racing down the stairs, up stone stairs, taking them three and four at a time. Scared? You bet we were scared. There's Augusty, you get in the windows. Maybe they can climb, we don't know. Dirty white chief, but hurry, hurry. Footsteps slow to stop. Gee, Lewis, look. You see them? Gee, oh, yes, I do. Up at the other end of the rock. Millions of squeaking rats growing louder and closer every second. Lewis, look at them. Gee, awed millions. Lewis, oh, they smell us. Here they come. Door grows, but does not close. Lewis, well, close the door. Gene strains, I can't stop. Lewis, here, let me. Grunting, they struggle with a groaning door. Finally slamming it shut. Level squeaking continues. Gene made it. Lewis, holy. That was close. Sound of single rat squeals. Gene, look, one of them. One got in, look, there. Lewis, well, get him. They chase the rat, howling and kicking. Gene, watch it. He uh, kick him. Lewis, what a brute. Dean, he is as big as a tomcat. Bigger, his eyes were wild and red. His teeth long and sharp and yellow. He went for us, starving, ravenous. We fought him, found, brought the one rat all over the room. It was, oh, believe me, does every like fighting a panther. Finally, after death blow, the rat screams and dies. Lewis, I've got him. Dean, we'd better get a lot. Lewis, uh, yeah, stop steps running up. Gene, as we ran up the winding staircase, we passed the tiny windows of various levels. Everyone was thick, wriggling, screaming, cut on a brown bar. Had a Lewis, I dreaded each, each successful level. Oh, they found a way in. Millions of squeaking rats in background. Look at Gusty, look at them. Oh, will you look at them? Lewis, it's a nightmare. Gusty, will you look at them? Gene, and the air of the gallery. The stick confused with the stink of them. The uh, uh, light was dim, brown, filtered through the cooling mass that was swarmed above other glass all about us. They couldn't see the sky, nothing but them. Their red eyes, their claws, their wriggling, hairy snouts, and their teeth, their wraps. They screamed, they hollered, and threw themselves against the glass. They were starving, we free. Though his voice stood very quietly. Oh, very, very quietly in the centre of the blast room. Under our beautiful light, and we waited. A dusty pax, what can we do? What can we do, Chief? Lewis, take it easy, take it easy. Gussie, I can't, I can't, I can't, just can't with Jean. Why, well, it wouldn't do you any good to. It wouldn't do you any good to stand there and shake. Lewis, that's right. A gussie to the rats. Go away, go away. Why, do you hear me? Go away, this instant. No, it's startling. It won't go away, not until... Unless you finish it, Chief. Well, until what? Lewis, well, until they've been fed. Gene, you take just so much horror. Then you could get used. You could take just so much horror. Then you can get used to it. They were interesting to watch. You know. They couldn't, couldn't understand the glass. They couldn't see us. They couldn't, they couldn't rush at us. They had the visible, the visible thin barrier held them off. Stop them. From time to time we caught a glimpse of the box below. More rats down there, swarming brown velvet, the bright tropical sunlight, and then the tide began to rise. The gusty was sighing, but only a drowned some of them. Gusty ship rats don't drown, crackles nervously. No, sir, you couldn't drown any one of them. They're all climbing up the tower. Lewis, this bunch around is getting thicker. Gee, yes, yeah, say, what's the time? A gusty called it a six or six. Lewis, you've got first watch, first watch, Gene, Gene, right. Lewis, wait me at ten, Lewis, I will, Gene, I will. Lewis, come along, Augusty. Town got steps away, Gene. It was getting dark. One side of the room was still lit by soft, little red sunset. And oh, the rats, oh, though, very pretty. I could see the wicks check my fuel and then lift the lamp. Rats panicked. Gene had caught them, lit them in a giant, giant whirling web of pale, hairless bodies, bellies, twitching red tails, bright lines, and then I started a rotary motor. Motor starts mechanism them coils as right, straight, cries up and down. I dot the effect and the rotating light hits them. 
Gina Light drove them mad. She swung slowly, slowly about. She blinded them in terrorist stabbing barbed might. Moving continually about, ever turning, ever touching, ever moving around and around. And they twitching and struggling, eyes flaming, they struck by the light, a bright light moving them behind the dark side of the room. So close, so close that they're not turn my back. You couldn't help turning your back when you when you're in the room made of glass on the dark side of the room. You couldn't see them. Their only their eyes, thousands of points of black red light blinking and twinkling like stars of hell. And when I came up to the gallery early next morning, they stood at they stood at the back to me, bowing to the rats, waving his arms and making a speech. Augustine, in my dear, dear, my, my dear, dear friend, audience, I'm going to play again a minister role that may be the toast of Paris Theatre, Paraletti, the evil genius of medieval underworld. I am um, he who did guide the dark soul of the Rossi into evil, evil parts, clinics medically. But do not be frightened, dear children. I will not hurt you much. Jean kept turning. I stood staring at him. Horror struck. He didn't notice me. Man had gone mad. He kept turning, telling his stories to all the rats, leaving no one out. To Gusty, 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 Gusty to Jean. Oh, the number one, the latecomer. Take your seat and turn it. Oh, dear patron. Jean, Gusty, stop it, stop it. Gusty continues his speech under. During the during jury, a blood stained monster was my partner in the country. Together we disavowed. Over four hundred little children, even in warm blood splattered. Jean and our age, but he didn't stop. He went on, bowing and scraping the rats. Big and red, blue eyes rolling and winkling. Winking his big red hair, wild red hair, waving back and grabbed him by the arms then. Slapped in the face. Jean slapped his face. He looked at me like a child, and then his face screwed up. He looked as though he was about to cry. Harshly to Augusty, go below, go on. Gusty, oh, very well, then. Directs later, my dear. Audience, later. They're to me today. Jean. Sure, he was crazy. I guess we all, we all were. A few hours later, he and I caught Lewis and me teasing the rats. Yes, sounds horrible. It was fun. He could get right up against the glass and make face to them. Go them crazy. They would scratch away trying to get at your eye. Lewis was even cutting at about it. He would pull a piece of bread out of his pocket and press it against the glass. Lewis laughs. Jean. The rats would scramble into a solid ball, biting each other, clustering little like grapes. From time to time, a whole knot of them would slip and fall a hundred and ten feet to the surface below. Lewis, look, look at the sharks. Jean, they're eating them. Lewis, those sharks are, are our friends. Oh, here, here. Let's get another lunch, lunch together. Last to the rats, hey, my bitches. Is that? No, oh, that's it, Paula. Killed each other. Huh? Laughs. Rats shriek and scratch loudly. Then suddenly pull away. Lewis, there, there they go. Jean and Gusty joined in the two. Very ingenious. Gusty learned that if he spread, he would himself. Gets a glass to bunch the bundle against his figure. Then they leap, keep, keep, leap back. Just his look, my paper changing rats. Jean, maybe went on all day and then. I was lying in bed, I was back to midnight. Night. I was very tired, I was just beginning to fall of a sleep when I came conscious of a new sound, crunk, odd crunchy noise. Jean couldn't figure it out at first, I got up, lit the lamp, and went to the window. Even as I looked out, I saw one of the panes begin to sag in. It read in the wood away. Jean yells, Lewis, come back, come quick. This, what, what is it? Jean, they found a way in. No, I held the glass with my hand. Now they're all going crazy and short. The success of this manoeuvre. They've all in every way in the wood. Lewis ran below and returned with a sheer last sheet of tin. Having nailed Jean, we spread it against the window, hammered it into place. 
Even as we did so, we felt the heavy bodies thundering against the other side. The window gave away. Humming, humming stops, Lewis. There, that ought to hold. We don't, we're done for. Jean runs. Bats can't run. Each in. There's no, they couldn't. Distant flashes. Grass, Jean. What was that, Lewis? I don't know. It came from below. Jean of the uh, storeroom window. Footsteps on the stairs. Streets rack lowly. Lewis, they're in. They're swarming up the stairs. Jean dropped the trap. Lewis, right. Modern do- doors dropped. The two noisy rats shriek. Jean, two of them got in. Lewis, let them go after, let's go after them. Two men fight with two rats. Jean, we didn't have to do, go, do, go after them. It came to us, I leaped to one side and bread. Mailing spikes sprung. I smashed one in foot of, into midair. <coughs> A rat is smashed. <coughs> Lewis hollers in pain. Gene, I well to see Lewis from the other. He ripped his hand open, his blood was pouring out. He held his hand aloft, kicked at the resounding rat, a step and swung and got him. Another rat killed. They saw my hand, he got my hand, Gene. That's both of them, Lewis. I've got you something to tie that up. Okay, get, get you something to tie that up. Blood, look at my it, blood, I'm bleeding. Gene, don't worry about it, Lewis. Here, I'll twine his handkerchief around it, it'll be okay. Lewis whimpers, blood. <clears throat> Lewis. Whimpers, blood, Gene. <clears throat> Finishes trying. There, there, that's not bad. Just a flesh, no apes. And become conscious of a new sound. Quiet, munching noise. Gene, they were gnawing their way through the wooden door, trap door. I watched the wood fascinating. And even as I did, it began to give way. A bristling, whiskery noise showed through. To this, we got we got to go up, scrambling footsteps up the stairs. Gene, the next level was the living quarters, the kitchen, a slam, the trap door. Another wooden door slammed shut. Gene, but it too was wood. Those whimpers who survived my blood. To so Gene, what are we going to do? Gene, I don't know. If we go through this one in a minute. There is the, the gallery, the trap door in the gallery is metal. Good, come on. Footsteps ran upstairs. Metal door, trap door, shown shut. Gene, we made it. Squeaking rats, we laid across the trap door, exhausted. While below us, the rats took over the entire town. Could hear them howling and fighting over our food supply, a water and leather. And all of us and others screamed and glared at, in at us. Swarmed a tangled mess hypnotized by the ever turning light. But the morning air in the little room was horrible. Till now we've been getting air. The tower below. Now that was sealed off. So all, it was all on food and water. The ladies also were panting, waiting and waiting, and the hours crawled on. I was almost dozing from fatigue when I saw a sight that brought me to fast. Gussy to the rat. Would you like to come in, my beauties, would you? I hold a power of life and death. I can let you in, if you know. Jean Gussie was standing by his glass, and one hand he held a big wrench. Wrench cracked some glass. Jean is tapping the glass gently. It's not quite enough to break it. I eased myself to my feet and slowly, very slowly, tiptoed towards him. Gussie's a rabbit. All I have to do is tap it just a little harder, and. Gene tackles a gusty and knocks him unconscious. Gene, I found a coil of wire and his toolkit. Trust him up, fasten him to stunction. Stunction of the extended room. Those who don't help lay on his side. Look at his bloody hand, weak and sick as a baby. So, if I, there I was, a lunatic, the care of a company. And all of out, watching on a little Brahmin of rats. A day dragged by, the supply boat won't be, will be due for, for another twelve days, I don't know what they could have done if they had come. 
I had only one way of summoning them. That was to shoot off fresh, fresh rockets. But the rockets were full of those alone. Even if they'd been right there in the gallery, I couldn't have opened the window to find them. At night, I tended the light, but if its flame was the very oxygen. And the following day, we lay in the first dismantled, starving, waiting the following night. I was again tended to light by the, sp- the small supply, bare wicking, it kept in the gallery, become exhausted quite suddenly. About midnight, the light went out. Squealing rats, dream. There was nothing I could do. Wicks were spoiled, three level below. Nothing I could do, nothing. A time to time, I strike a match to see the clock. Much strikes back to react. And Jean, and when I did, it lit up a million red eyes about us all, about watching, waiting below. It was grown quiet. It cleaned us out, and there they too were waiting, all waiting, and the rats came quite suddenly. The sonnet. Long pulse of sonnet. Jean, and then I heard it. Distant, correct plays, mournful, truthful, played a tune. Jean, and there I saw, and there I saw the sky, the stars. As a girl, I went to the glass, and the water full freighter, Barnabas, throwing a few lights, came softly in as it toward us. And our lights was out. I didn't know. I wanted to open the windows, call out to them, warn them somehow. But I was afraid, and what if rats were hiding from me? Tricking me, so I waited. Jean. She surrounded very softly on a reef, not two hundred yards from the quay, grounded, but so gently, man playing the cornet. Was he a passenger, crewman, or off watch? Don't even, don't, didn't even stop playing. They tried washing her back off. I could see them, I could have told them to save fuel. The tide was rising. Then I would have floated her free, and I waited. Till it hits a slightly shallow note, but long silent silence. Gee, that's all. That's the story. The sun came up. There wasn't a rat on the whole key. Every last one of the terror army had left us. We were back to sea on, our, on the new ship. Just the insane asylum. He never recovered. Lewis, they took him into Can- Canaan. He died of blood poisoning from his bite. Your inception, yes. That's the whole of it. Now, if you excuse me now, I must be set my traps. Took a no, no mouth trap by a rat to this house. I could say, should say that. Out in the night isn't bad. But sometimes when I see strange vessels approaching, I am a little nervous. Sure, somewhere on the seas, there's a little banana boat, about crew. It is a human crew. 